Let's bring back our market panel, Charlie Babrinskoy and David Bonson. My goodness, what a what a start to the hour here. Uh, Charlie, I was coming to you before all of this happened to talk a little bit about just the strong move higher we have seen in the major averages to start the year. The fact that it's been powered so heavily by the biggest tech names and what that's meant in terms of if you take a look at a chart of the market weight versus the equal weight S&P, the divergence we've seen there. How important is that to the health of this rally continuing into the second half of the year? Well, it's very important, and it's why we shouldn't talk about the stock market being so overpriced. It's about eight or nine stocks that have rallied so dramatically and are overpriced. It, the big segments of the market, the value stocks that I love, are trading at very reasonable multiples. They're at those low multiples because people have been worried about a recession. And if we get better inflationary news, and if the Fed takes its foot off the neck of the economy, we can have a decent uh, economy, and those value cyclical stocks can do very well. We have lots of stocks that are absolutely at trading at bubble levels that people should be nervous about, but we have broad parts of this market that are trading at historically attractive rates. You know some of the names I love, industrials, financials, some energy names that are very reasonable here. All right. David, I do want to get your thoughts on what you like in the market right now and whether what we just heard from President Biden gives you, uh, gives you a moment to reconsider how that, how that could look uh, if you have a consumer that has so far, even with just some of the data today, remained pretty resilient and now perhaps does not have student loan repayments uh, added to the mix. No, I think the Supreme Court did President Biden a huge favor today. I think it was a disastrous idea, and I do not believe the economy is dependent upon magically wiping away $10,000 of money per household. The consumer spends when the consumer has wages, and to the extent that we shuffle the deck around with redistribution, it doesn't create new wealth. What we need is production. That's what drives economic growth. And I believe that we, I very much agree with what Charlie just said, in industrials, financials, energy, there are valuations that line up with opportunity. And, and I think that some of these big tech companies are wonderful companies that have grown leaps and bounds. I just think their stock price is totally disconnected from reality. So the macroeconomic story to me is that there are places you can invest, but you really have to be selective right now.